and in this video we're going to be working with uh, POTW IED 1.3.3. Uh, we're going to start on number 16 uh, before it has you making some sketches and deleting and dragging things around. I uh, will show you at the beginning how to delete uh, constraints on your sketches so you can do that if you have not already done that part. Uh, but we're going to start on 16 and work through dimensioning uh, that object which is I believe number 29 or so. Uh, so first we're going to start with the sketching this object so it says to make a line on the x-axis look like we'll start at the origin and we'll go straight to the left. Uh, after that we go up perpendicularly and then over perpendicularly and then diagonal. So we'll start off with those first few steps. Uh, so I'm just going to select my line tool and go over horizontally staying on the x. Uh, then I go up. You can so see on the side here it's shown a straight line for a vertical constraint. That's not what it wants here, even though it would work. Uh, so I'm going to click and place my line. Then I'm going to hit escape. And then when I hover over the line, it shows that constraint. And I'm going to delete that constraint just so we can see how to delete a constraint. So I click on it, a normal click, and then I right click and delete sketch entity. And instead, it wants us to do a perpendicular constraint. So I'm going to come up and select my perpendicular. On your screen, if you have a larger screen, it may already be up there and you just have to select it. Otherwise, it's a drop down. Uh, then I just select the line, the two lines I want to be perpendicular, and it adds that constraint. Uh, to have your constraint show up constantly, you can come over here where it says sketch one and say show constraints. And we can see that now it's showing that perpendicular constraint. Uh, then we want to add a line that goes over perpendicularly. Again, it's showing me a uh, horizontal line, and then I can go back and I could change it if I want. However, it does show that perpendicular constraint on there. Uh, then it says to go up at an angle, so I want to go up at an angle. Uh, it showed it going past the uh, y-axis, so I'm going to go past the y-axis. Uh, next, I believe it wants us to go up uh, straight up, which is going to be perpendicular to the line number 3. Uh, so we'll go straight up. It's going to show a vertical constraint. Again, I'm just going to hit that escape and delete that sketch entity. Uh, this time I want to go perpendicular between this line and this line. Uh, again, I'm, while I'm here, I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to delete this horizontal uh, just so we match up what the assignment's asking for. Delete that sketch entity and make those perpendicular. Again, the horizontal is, there's nothing wrong with it with the way this item looks, uh, but we're just trying to match what they have on here. Uh, then I'm going to keep going down. So then it wants us to go over, but not horizontal. It wants us to go at an angle and then to continue uh, to make this shape. And then we're going to force these uh, constraints to shape it how we want it to look. Uh, so we go over, down, over, over, and then. Uh, back to the beginning. So I'm going to go back and real quick roughly sketch that uh, and then we'll add in those constraints to make sure it matches. So we'll go over. Again, we don't want it to be horizontal, so I'm going to go over. I'm going to go down, not horizontal. I uh, look back at the object. We go diagonal down. Uh, then we go horizontal. Again, I'm not going to go perfectly horizontal here. And then we come back to the X and Connect it. Connect the open endpoint to line 1 and 9 to finish our sketch. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to go all the way down here. Uh, with that, I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to delete that origin constraint. So I'm going to delete that sketch entity there. Uh, then we're going to start adding the constraints to make it match up what it looks like. So it says enforce a parallel constraint with line 5 and 7. So we want 5 and 7 to be parallel. Uh, so we're just going to come up, select parallel, select line 5, select line 7, and make those parallel. Uh, and then it still wants 6 to be slightly off horizontal, so we'll keep it off slightly. Uh, then it says line 8, enforce a perpendicular constraint with line 4. Uh, so I'm going to switch over to perpendicular, and then line 8, and line 4, and make those perpendicular. Uh, then it says line 9, enforce a parallel constraint with line 3. Uh, so we want 3 and 9 to be parallel. So again, I'm going to select my parallel constraint, and I select this one, and this one, and make those parallel. Uh, finally, it says line 10, connect the open endpoints of line 1 and line 9. 
Uh, so I just connect my endpoints. Uh, we could drag this over to make it look more like we want it. And I'm also going to uh, do a coincident constraint since I've left the origin. I'm just going to select line 1 and the x-axis. Uh, I'm going to hit escape. And you can see we can still drag some. So to make it more look more like our object, we can drag that around. Uh, but that gives us that overall shape we're looking for. Again, it's not fully constrained, so we're not done with this sketch, uh, but it does let us do some of those abilities. Uh, then it has us to try dragging and see what happens. So you can try to drag some points. We just dragged one and saw what happened. Uh, then we want to make sure the following constraints are satisfied. And line 1 and 9 should always remain parallel. So we, again, select our line tool, our parallel constraint. We want 1 and 9 to be parallel. So we have that constraint set. Uh, line 6 should always remain parallel with the x-axis despite revisions in the orientation of any other line. Uh, so we want line 6, which is this top line, and our x-axis to always be parallel. Uh, so we select those. Since we already have the parallel tool, we could just select those two. We want line 5 and 7 to always be the same length, so we're going to change over to the equal tool, and we want 5 and 7 to be the same length. Uh, then the design would require that line 3 and 8 align horizontally so that they move up and down together. Uh, so we want to put those horizontal, it sounds like. So we do uh, horizontal, and that's for uh, 3 and 8, I believe. So 3 would be this one, and 8 would be this one. We want those horizontal, and we want them to be on the same uh, line, uh, well, collinear. I think them collinear, we just use a coincident constraint, and then we just have to select the line. So we select uh, line 8 and 3, and that makes them both horizontal now and collinear or coincident is what the constraint's called. Uh, so that lets us move them and they, they're still lined up with one another. Uh, 20 says add a constraint to your CAD sketch to enforce each restriction that is not satisfied. That's what we just did. And then create a quick sketch of the profile and show the constraints that you added. Uh, that would just be putting it on this page. It's already there. Uh, use a construction line to create a vertical line uh, through the midpoints of line 1 and 6 uh, that we're going to use later. So let's go through and do that. Uh, so we need a line. We want a construction line. So up here we're going to select construction. And I'm just going to go from the, you can see it goes midpoint. And then I want the midpoint of line 1 and 6. Uh, right now I'm not getting directly on the midpoint. So I'm just going to click and show you how to get the midpoint. So we're going to come up here and select midpoint. Select the point, select the line, and that makes it go to the midpoint. You can see it's not uh, vertical in this case. I uh, don't remember if it wants it to be vertical, so we're going to select our vertical tool. Uh, so again, we just find vertical and select that line, and that makes it vertical. Uh, so that completes 22. Uh, then... 23, fix the midpoint of line 1 to the origin of the sketch plane. So we're going to use a coincident constraint to do this. Uh, so I'm going to select my coincident uh, constraint and select the point and then select my origin if I can get it. There we go. And then I'll zoom out. And you can see uh, it kind of crossed up my shape, which is fine, uh, because as we add more constraints, hopefully it uh, fixes up what that looks like. Uh, but it can cause adding constraints in the wrong sequence can cause your shape to look uh, kind of out of flux. Uh, so now that we've added that construction line, uh, we fixed the midpoint on line 1 to the origin, uh, we're going on to 24. Uh, we want to draw that sketch. Uh, so in order to draw that, I'm going to hit escape and kind of drag my uh, figure so it looks a little more like we expect it to. And I'm going to hide my constraints for just a second just to make it easier to click on points and drag them out. So again, I'm just dragging these out so it's easier for us to work with. So 
that gives me more of the shape we're looking for. It's uh, not exactly the perfect shape they wanted, uh, but it gives us more of that shape they look for. I'll turn my constraints back on so you can see them. And let's look at 24. Uh, we're drawing a circle that we want the center of the circle to meet the following constraints. On a vertical line to the intersections of 3 and 4, and tangent to a horizontal line to the midpoint of line 2. Uh, so I'm going to start by adding that horizontal line, and then I'll add the circle. So I want a line. I want it to be a construction, and I want it coming from the midpoint and just to come out horizontally. I'll hit escape, and then I'm going to add a circle. Uh, so I'm going to put my circle in. I'm just going to put it randomly and then uh, constrain it to put it in the right place. Uh, so first, I want it to be uh, vertical, I believe. Yes, vertical through that point. So vertical, and I select my point and the center point of my circle. Uh, then I'm going to select tangent, so I'm going to select the tangent constraint, and I'll select my uh, line and my circle. And it, you can see it made my uh, circle much, much smaller. Uh, when we dimension it, we can make it bigger on hit escape, and you can see that circle. It's there, we can drag it out bigger, you can drag it above, so it matches what we see in the picture, uh, but you can do those movements with it. But in the con it's got the constraints we want. Finally, it wants us to mirror the circle across the construction line. So we're just going to uh, select outside of those objects. I'm going to zoom out so you can see what's going on. And we're just going to select the mirror tool. We're going to select our circle. Hopefully, we can select. Uh, we're going to select. I'm going to hit escape since I was clicked on something. I'm going to select my mirror line, which is the center. And then I'm going to select my circle. And it mirrors it across the center there. Uh, when you can see in this one, it doesn't keep all those constraints as we mirror it. Uh, we could add those if we needed to. Uh, then it shows us what can happen if we can move some lines around. We already saw that happen earlier, and we can still have some of that crazy behavior happen. Uh, but if we do 27 and dimension it, then you will not have to worry about it. So we're going to finish up by doing these dimensions. Uh, so again, it's in millimeters, so we got type mm after each one. I'm just going to start on the 20 on top and work my way around. So I select my dimension tool. I'm just going to select that top line and type in 20 mm for millimeters. Uh, then I'm just going to work my way around so it's 15 going down. So we select the line going down and type in 15 mm. Uh, if you forget the mm, it's going to put it in inches since we didn't change our default. Uh, so definitely want to make sure to do that. Uh, then the lower line is going to be 15. Uh, escape. There's this uh, parallel to the other line. I believe we missed that constraint earlier, so we'll go back and add that parallel constraint in. So we're going to select that one and zoom out and select to make it parallel to line 1. Uh, so we get that vertical con constraint there. Uh, then we're going to click on it and type 15 mm. Uh, it shows us from the top to the bottom is going to be 45 millimeters, so 45 mm. Uh, then keep walking around. The bottom is 100, so come on the bottom, type 100 millimeters. Uh, and then the holes, we have a 5 as our diameter. So we click the hole and make it 5 on our diameter. So you just click the outside, type 5 millimeters, and set that as 5. I'm going to hit escape. If we want to move it above that line, that axis, uh, we could still move it up above, I believe. We should be able to. Uh, so that gives us that constraint. And we're almost fully constrained. Uh, there's a few blue lines left, which means it's not fully constrained. Uh, but most of this object is fully constrained at this time. Uh, so hopefully this helps you in creating 1.3.3 uh, and working a little bit with the constraints. Uh, typically when you're done, you want to hide your constraints. Otherwise, it's a very busy object. Uh, so hopefully this helps. Good luck.